All right, everyone, it's time for the Dumbest Tweet Ever Award, and it goes to the Catholic Pope, which, you know, may not be a huge surprise to those of us who are, are a little more bitter about organized religion, especially <laughs> the Vatican. I still find it funny when people are like, oh, Catholics set up all these charities. Like, yeah, yeah, of course, and it's a drop in the bucket compared to the income. You know, the Pope still, uh, this, this particular Catholic Pope might choose not to wear the golden crown and carry around the silver scepter and all the really, really lavish regalia more than he has to, like he prefers to dress more like a regular priest or something. That's fine, but you know, if he gets sick, he can still afford the million dollar medical bill. If he's hungry, he can still afford the good wine, the good food. He doesn't have to worry about where his meal's coming from, neither do any of his cardinals. These people are fantastically wealthy. They're sitting on a collection of literature alone that's probably worth a billion bucks. So don't get me started about all of that nonsense. You know, normal people are capable of doing charitable things without giving it to somebody else to do it for them. But the Catholic Pope uh, decided to uh, rant on Twitter about you know, weapons, by which I'm assuming he's weighing in primarily on the gun debate uh, as well as the Ma war debate. Oh. Uh, you know, we should just ban weapons, you know, we'll have a peaceful world, essentially. Okay, uh, ban weapons. You, know, you start, you know, disarm your, sec you know, your security team, since it's a sin to own a gun, I guess. And then we'll see what happens. We'll see how long the Vatican City stays the Vatican City and doesn't have some uh, random person who got drunk and convinced their friends to go invade your little microstate uh, you know, before you see their flag above uh, St. Peter. <laughs> so, yeah, that'd be really, really funny, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I weighed in and said, well, if the Pope does actually carry through with his apparent new philosophy of, you know, my guns are bad, okay, uh, it'd be funny. I, I guess I can get together with some of you and we can go storm the Vatican. We'll just turn it into a libertarian monarchist microstate. We'll put a bunch of servers in. We'll, we'll release the Vatican archives like, you know, finally people can find out what weird occult texts they probably have in there. You know, the necromancer, <laughs> all this other stuff. Uh, and then we'll put in a server farm and we'll host like every libertarian platform. And nobody will be able to do anything about it because what are they going to do? Start firing on, on, you know, all of the historical architecture and potentially damaging it? I don't think that would fly with Italian authorities. So we'll just uh, we'll hook the entire world up by satellite and become the world's largest server farm. I think it could work, yeah. And then we can take all the money that they probably have stashed there in gold and silver form, and, you know, that'll fund our endeavors for the next thousand years. So we'll just, and we'll thrive on tourism. It'll be funny. I, I'm, you know, I'm getting off topic, but really, this shows the stupidity of some of the anti-gun crowd. It's not just, you know, the Catholic Pope. This is just one of the most, you know, visible people who has said something to this effect. But other people say it too. They actually think, that, oh, yeah, like, ban guns and then, you know, magically crime disappears. Everyone is polite. Human nature goes away. Criminals, they'll voluntarily lay down their guns because, you know, they, they'll stop being criminals because they don't want to break the law by owning a weapon if weapons are banned. It, just makes, it makes sense in their addled minds, I guess. This is the average mentality of the anti-gunner. And uh, they've gotten to the point. Here's a funny part. You probably saw weeks ago they were reporting, oh, uh, we need to think of uh, new ways to debate the Second Amendment crowd because our, our, basically our points aren't working. They can counter all of these statistics and facts. They, essentially, the idea was that they couldn't win if they were arguing from ignorance. Well, yeah, that's definitely true. That's why you will inevitably lose because you are inevitably ignorant if you're an anti-gunner. Absolutely. If you look, historically speaking, guns in private hands don't take anywhere near as many lives as guns centralized in government hands. You look at all the great purges throughout history and how maybe they would have been uh, held off. Maybe it wouldn't have happened if private citizens in those situations had been better armed. Maybe Mao's commies wouldn't have been able to uh, kill off 20, 30 million people. Maybe Stalin wouldn't have been able to do that. Maybe Hitler wouldn't have been able to do that. Oh, but there was no one really to stand against them. And in any case, when they had weapons at all, it was specifically non-military weapons. Oh, you can't have this assault-style weapon, says Adolf or Joseph, uh, because it scares us. The, con the concept of private citizenry that's armed scares a dictator. It scares a group of oligarchs. It scares the plutocracy. They worry about the little people rising up and, uh, I guess, hanging them or something. Uh, so the Pope when he suggests this. He can hide behind his, his religion all he wants. Really what he's saying is people should be disarmed and helpless, and they should rely upon the benevolence 
of their leaders, and they shouldn't be citizens, they should be servants, they should be slaves, serfs. That's what a person who is not allowed, if you, if you can be told that you're not allowed to effectively defend yourself, you're not a citizen. Therein lies the problem. Now to the Pope, who is a foreign theocrat, a totalitarian head of state, who runs with virtual absolute authority within his territory, who influences other world leaders like a despot, for him that's pro pro yeah, of course he believes that people should be slaves. In the most literal sense, what is an organized religion but an attempt to enslave people's minds usually anyway? To take their money away? I mean, it operates almost in the same sense as a state. You're giving a portion of your income. Maybe it's voluntary. Sometimes it's not. You, know, you fucking pay your jizya tax, you know, <laughs> something like that. Um, and to control what people do. Even where it's just coercive and it's not, you know, backed up by force. You know, the Catholic Church isn't going to send... Uh, capos to your home to uh, beat your legs backwards if you uh, had uh, premarital sex or something. But they will risk, you know, they will say, well, you risk hellfire if you piss us off, essentially. We might withhold communion, you heretic. Uh, that was more common in the past, but essentially. We are the godly. This The Pope is potentially infallible, can invoke it, I guess, basically at a whim, uh, and then tells you essentially how to live your life. Now, how very funny it is that the same Catholic Church that supposedly you know, a generation ago was like the, the head of far-right traditionalism uh, now has a pope that says, oh, well, you know, people should be disarmed because it'll be a better world. No, it won't be a better world. It'll be a world full of fire and, and horror. That's essentially what it'll be. It's also not going to happen. Even in many otherwise authoritarian countries, there are some firearms in circulation, some of them in significant numbers. There are significant numbers of firearms in Southeast Asia, that's for sure. Don't piss off the population of Cambodia anytime. Uh, I don't think you'll survive the endeavor. Uh, as far as the United States, I always find it funny when U.S. citizens say, you know, basically, fuck Trump, you know, someone who's elected. We're going to listen to a foreign, unelected head of state who represents a theocracy. That, on another continent, no less. We're going to listen to some, to some European tyrant, which is basically what the Pope is. The Catholic Pope, that is. Of course, uh, some people always say, why do you say Catholic Pope instead of just Pope? Well, there, you know, anyone can say I'm the Pope. I could say that I'm the Pope. Who gives a fuck? It's just an honorary title that he get, got from a bunch of other old dudes who call themselves religious leaders. That's essentially all that happened in the College of Cardinals. Technically an elected position, although not really. You know, how do you think they come about to who they're going to elect? It's, it's, in his case, it was public image. He looked like the kind of person who would have more humility. He wouldn't wear the, the golden crown and stuff as opposed to maybe a rat singer. He was more like, like uh, what's his name, John Paul maybe with more humility. It was a PR move to sort of modernize the Catholic image insofar as they're able to be modernized at all. That's all it boils down to. This is the dumbest tweet I've ever seen and it's coming from someone who represents hundreds of millions of people, supposedly at least in a spiritual fashion, and literally runs a microstate. He is also, technically speaking, a secular world leader because of that fact. That is a semi-sovereign, a technically sovereign microstate. It's like San Marino or something. It's like, okay, we only exist because Italy lets us, but what, what's the Italian authorities going to do? Tell all the Catholics in Italy, like 99% of the fucking population, hey, we're reabsorbing the Vatican. We're going to administer it in a secular sense now. Yeah, there'd be more protests for that than uh, there would be over the migrant crisis or over taxation or basically anything else that could possibly happen. Any miscarriage of justice would lead to less riot and revolution than something like that. <laughs> the, the, the liberals wouldn't like it, and the conservatives wouldn't like it either. Nobody would be in favor of it. I don't think there's any political movement there that would ever suggest such a thing. Um, it's, it's dumb. You know, we're going to ban all weapons and make the world a better place. Yes, there will be no war if we ban weapons. No, what will happen is the next war would be fought with sticks. And people would beat each other over the heads. And then somebody would develop a sword. And then somebody would develop a bow and arrow. And then somebody would redevelop the musket. And then somebody would redevelop the tank. It happened all over again. You could exhaust all military technology worldwide and it would just come roaring back to life. And it'd be quicker because you'd, you know, you'd also have to burn all the books teaching people how to make such things or even speaking about their basic form. All that historical literature, I guess, would go by the wayside. Are you suggesting, by the way, just the abolition of weapons of war writ large as far as modern militaries go? Or do you include, like, you know, the halberds that your, you know, Swiss guards carry? Are those banned too? 
What about armor? It's not a weapon, but it is, you know, basically used in warfare for the most part. So we should be cave people. We'll hurl rocks at our prey. Okay. What about tools that can be used as weapons? What about a chainsaw? You know, you can cut somebody in half with one of those. That, that's pretty bad. That could be misused. You know, the Pope doesn't know anything about weapons, though. He was raised in a largely disarmed society and now is in an area where the only weapons that are allowed are carried by people who are ready to kill anybody that rushes him. That's essentially the problem. Now, it's a problem with a lot of world leaders. They're, they're often born in urban areas, uh, so they are, they're out of touch with the way that maybe the, the commoners, the small towners, the provincials that live their lives. That's a big problem. We get a bunch of politicians in D.C. who have never fired a gun, yet they're... It's, it's sort of like when the left says, well, uh, Congress is made up of old people. They shouldn't make internet-based policies. They shouldn't regulate the internet because they can't possibly know anything about it. That's right. They're inept. They don't know what they're talking about. They also don't generally know what they're talking about with regards to firearms, but you trust them on that one. I find that astonishing that you can overlook your own hypocrisy. As for the Pope, just a crazy old theocrat. That's all he'll ever be. That's about all. Peace out.